Foot Clan, we have some great discussion on today's episode about these second-tier wide receivers, the the safe ones, the, the high upside ones, and we find out, you're going to have to watch and find out, who is Bobby Big Time? Foot Clan, we'd like to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's episode. IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short, and a VPN is a super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. You can use a VPN on your computer, tablet, phone, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. When you use a VPN, all your data is encrypted. What you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching, whatever it is you're doing, it's your business and it's nobody else's business. Uh, you get an anonymous IP address. That means your personal IP address can't be tracked by anyone on the web and circumvent any online censorship. So go to ipvanish.com slash footballers, claim your 65% savings. They have plans starting at just $3.49 or $31.49 a year. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated a 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. Show them some love. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers. Hey, this is Allen Robinson, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, April 22nd, Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, another episode of the show. Right here, right now, discussing a number of topics on today's episode, including part two of our early wide receiver rankings. Part deux. Part deux, as they say. <laughs> Yes, in hot was shots. Was it hot shots? Yes. Part du, oh, part yeah. du. Part du. I, uh, I think I was the right age to watch those movies. Oh, my goodness, hot shots. The back when they were just out of control. Leslie super, Nielsen was in there, right? Super slapstick like that. An Don't call me Shirley. Oh, man, just the best. Yeah, I, I remember being that age watching that. And the, uh, the breakfast on the belly. Oh, <laughs> that was... <laughs> Did you watch that? that was, what the parents is a special age. <laughs> <Sheesh>. <laughs> the NFL draft is in one week. Oh baby! Oh yes! Oh, yes! Jason, oh man, is running a temperature when now that he's thinking about the NFL when draft. When you say it like that, that, that we're literally a week away. Yes. I mean, oh baby, let's go football. We have some special things planned for draft week. Some announcements coming on Tuesday. We're going to be doing some very neat stuff for the NFL draft. We're all very excited. We'll get to finally put some of these rookies on some rosters, see how things shake out, give you all the fantasy implications. Dynasty fantasy managers are biting their nails. It's a combination of fear and anticipation. Look, oh, I, traded, I tried to trade with Brooks. Oh, please Please do tell. Well, a couple things. He put uh, Zeke on the block in our Dynasty League. Uh-huh. And then, um, you know, we've talked a lot on the show about a couple of running backs recently. Joe Mixon. Yes. Of the Cincinnati Bengals. And yes. James Robinson. And it's kind of, uh, you know, I, I tried to float him a little James Robinson, Joe Mixon action. In case he was out on Mixon and into Robinson. And he basically Wait, said. Wait, does Brooks have Mixon? Yes. He does. Oh, okay. So he, it was one of those things, though, where he's like, well, I, I can't trade for James Robinson or Raheem Mostert. I'm too afraid of the draft. I'm too yeah. afraid of what's going to happen. And the only reason I'm willing to trade them is because of the draft. Is because I'm, I'm willing to, you know, make that trade now because I'm a little bit afraid yeah. of the draft. Sounds like the draft's not going to go well for you. In, a, in the context of my dynasty team, the players that I'm not afraid of losing their jobs. That's when uh, first round and second round running backs are drafted to those teams. Well, there was a mock draft by the uh, much acclaimed. Oh Pete, my goodness, Peter gracious. Schrager. Peter Schrager came Shr out. Pete, who? Petey, what are you doing over there, Tons man? Tons of respect in the draft community for his mock drafts. Well thought out, well researched. 
uh, Travis Etienne in the first round to Washington. Yeah, and then he just he's like credibility. Just, just throw it in shattered, the garbage. Just shattered. What are you it, doing, man? Because it affects your team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. That's not because it couldn't happen, no. but because it would destroy your dynasty team. Yeah. So uh, I there, think guys, I, I, the show is done. <laughs> if we watch the draft on Thursday night, and Travis Etienne or it, it you gonna anyone, take some personal time? Any running back is drafted to Washington in the, in the first round. It's it's done. I'm off the show. I've I'm I because I've I'm dead. There is no question. I will have my phone out and I will be recording Mike when the when Washington's pick takes place, because just the possibility of that content hitting to me, get his death on video. I want to like, <laughs> just a chance that we could watch just him die. Watch You're, him. You can see the moment the life leaves leaves his eyes. That's right. I want to be able to share that. On social media, Twitter. Warning back. Yeah, that's the last thing you hear. Um, we'll see if Antonio Gibson can do the eulogy for you. Um, oh. Twitter at the FF Ballers is where I'll be sharing that video. <laughs> and the fantasyfootballers.com. Head to the website. There are some absolutely incredible offseason articles. I know that two episodes a week from this show were year round, but two episodes, maybe it's not enough. You want some articles from our. Uh, Incredible writing staff. Go to thefantasyfootballers.com. There's an offensive line article with so many words. Intelligent wisdom from Kyle Borgagnoni. And you can check that out on the website. And you can also head over to our community at jointhefoot.com. You can check out the draft kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. You guys want to do some buy-sell? Let's go. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. You do get an extra episode of the show at jointhefoot.com. So if you need more, that is one way to get more. Buy or Sell, T. Higgins, 1,200 receiving yards in 2020. A reminder, there are 17 games this upcoming season, um, which is 2021. Even in 17 games, 1,200 Not yards. Not 2020. 1,200 yards is... That'll be an impressive year. So uh, do you buy or sell 1,200 receiving yards in 2021 for T. Higgins? That would be a 70 receiving yards per game average for Higgins. There were 15 different wide receivers that averaged 70 yards per game in 2020. And that metric I think we should keep bringing to the forefront for comprehension of the 17-game mm -hmm. season because that would put T. Higgins in the top 15 in terms of yardage. Yeah. Yeah, and if, if you think about last year, so he didn't really play in weeks 1 and 17. So if you look at his season from 2 through week 16, the, he was on a 1,000-yard pace as a rookie, which is fantastic. So now you have A.J. Green gone. That's 104 targets that have vanished from the offense. Presumably, uh, you're going to get a full season or at least the majority of a season out of Joe Burrow, who is also in year 2. Uh, a lot of reasons to believe T. Higgins, who I personally love and believe in. Um, a lot of reasons to think he could take that step up, that that year two leap, and be a top fifteen guy. Um, I'm going to sell though because I I'm still not 100 percent sold that the Bengals are ready as an offense to like they've got a lot of pieces we like. We just talked about talking about Joe Mixon. Um, I am a believer in Joe Burrow, but I, I think they're still two years away, uh, with the offensive line and, you know, the, the I've still never seen Zach Taylor do something with, that made me really believe that he's going to be the long-term solution, despite Joe Burrow saying, you know, he thinks he's going to be there forever. Um, I, I guess I'm, I feel like I'm selling when I'm selling this, I'm selling the Bengals. I'm just not hmm. sold right now on the offense of the Bengals for 2021 I'm going to sell it for different reasons I do believe in Zach Taylor I believe in the offensive line and the offensive uh, progress of this team but I also believe that they're going to add another weapon it could be as soon as you know the first round Kyle Pitts or Jamar Chase uh, if they don't go offensive line there and I don't know if you're just going I don't know if you're going to get enough week to week I think Higgins is a great player um but I'm going to sell it. I think he'll be underneath that total. And I am selling for a different reason of... Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really selling this 1,200 yards. Uh, but when is, 
when is Joe Burrow really ready to unleash? Is it is it week one? Probably not. You're saying the recovery from yes, injury. Yes, I mean it was not just an ACL tear that which like if Joe Burrow was just if it was a clean ACL tear, he'd probably be ready to go week one with the the, the uh, where we are in medicine with just that injury. But it was a as torn ACL. It was a torn MCL. Like he had a really catastrophic knee injury that he can come back from. But I'm not sure that he's going to be ready to go week one. I'm not sure that he's going to be ready to go week three. Like that's that's something that's a variable that we just don't have the information for right now. So with all the other things you guys have talked about, I would sell the 1,200 yards for T. Higgins just because Burrow might not be ready. Yeah, it's yeah. it's ACL plus MCL plus meniscus plus damage to the PCL. Yeah, that's it was that's a, a lot of that's a lot of things well, wrong. I, and and they're going to throw the football. I mean. One thing that Zach Taylor did right when he came in was remember Andy Dalton. He was like the passing volume leader to start uh, Zach Taylor's coaching career. Just so you know, we're not going to be able to talk about T. Higgins on today's show because he did not make the eleven through twenty range. Uh, he is our early consensus wide receiver thirty right now. Um, but we we uh, just did talk about him. Well, okay. Yeah, we're, that's uh, a good we're, point, not, Mike. we're not going to talk about him later. Okay. Okay. So that's accurate. I'm sorry. I'm about just trying to hold you accountable. Yeah. In this, this concludes our T Higgins segment. Word, words, <laughs> words matter. Uh, that was buy or sell from pristine auction.com. Check them out. Pristine auction.com. They have hundreds of uh, daily sports memorabilia auctions. When you are interested in something, use the code ballers register at pristine auction.com. You'll get a $10 credit. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right. Oh, yeah. We've got uh, – what piece of news do you want to start with? Well, here? I just – throwing out the NFL will be releasing the schedule on May 12th. So prepare your timelines for Team X is going – This record. This record. That's It's going to explode. But the snowball is now it, – it's been built – it's at the top of the mountain, and the draft is just pushing this thing down. Like we are in full steam ahead, where the NFL feels like it's it's still very far away. When I say you know September, that's a really long time from now, but not really. We we are the snowball is is building momentum. We are already really into an NFL season where there's going to be news coming out all the time. Yeah, and it's very exciting. It's very exciting. Uh, Speaking of not news news, uh, the Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni declined to name Jalen Hurts the starting quarterback. <laughs> I mean, come on, Nick. Says it will be an open competition. Wink. <laughs> this, is, this will totally motivate my guys and nobody will know who our quarterback is. It's the stupidest nonsense of all time. Of all time. You think? Do you think uh, it's honest, Andy? Do you think Joe Flacco has a... Shot here? I don't think it's honest, but I don't think it's good that he wouldn't just say it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think it's want... dishonest, but you don't – you know, it's not like the Cardinals did this with, with Kyler Murray when he was drafted. It was like, okay, you're the starter from the moment that you get drafted. It's obvious. I'm not going to pretend like somebody's going to compete with you. Joe Burrow, same story. Uh, here you have Jalen Hurts. Why not just tell Jalen Hurts he's the guy? Maybe that's old-fashioned coaching. It, it is. It's real – <laughs> it's old school NFL head coach stuff of making them earn it. And look, maybe they, maybe a quarterback falls in the draft, right, to their position. And that would they, be bad to say Jalen Hurts today, and then a quarterback falls. But he, but it wouldn't, because you could say Jalen Hurts is the starting quarterback, and then if you draft someone, what the reporters you told us that Jalen Hurts was going to be your starter, you're like, yeah, he was, and now this guy's going to start for us. What is? I don't get these types of motivational tactics. I much prefer the, yes, Jalen Hurts is our Does guy. Does that happen more with brand-new head coaches? Apparently. Like they come into a new team, Maybe. and they just don't want to declare anything. It's They want to let everybody know that you're all, you know, I'm the new guy. I've never seen film before. I want to see it on the field. This, uh, You know, uh, this is Nick Sirianni was the one that is going around and is interviewing these college players. You, did you hear what he's doing with them? He's playing um, paper, rock, scissors. He what, want, that was him, that too? That was him, too, because oh. he wants to see how competitive they are. Their competitive spirit. So we're going to paper, rock, scissors. I mean, he can is you, next level, guys. Can you this, imagine 
being like going through that process. It's already like scary enough. Remember when you were that old and you're interviewing for the you're taking the most important job interviews of your life, and then someone says, "Hey, let's play paper rock scissors." Are you really gonna? Like go all out and show your competitive spirit at that moment. My chance only, is here. Only if you want to be a Philadelphia I mean, Eagle. That is, uh. come on, man. Maybe Joe Flacco is really competitive in paper rock scissors. Maybe, Maybe he's yeah. like Jason. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Maybe this is an honest comment. Maybe send in the clown after card. that after that Rochambeau <laughs> with Joe. I mean, this is an open competition. If you're new to fantasy football, be prepared for the, you know. We make a lot out of a little in the off season. Storylines, uh, coach speak. These are things that we will remind you about throughout the off season because I don't know. We're all desperate for news, and one little bit of news can go a long way. Clown speak. Jordan Ooh. Reed has retired. Oh. Rule eighty six has officially hung him up. Pour one out for for another great fantasy football player who. Unfortunately, we didn't really get to see the ceiling from Jordan Reed was going. He was on track to just be an absolute stud. Unfortunately, head injuries took him out of the game. But Jordan Reed, I will always remember you. I will always have a special place in my heart for Rule 86. We may have to retire Rule 86. Like There'll never be another Rule 86. Oh, no, for sure. We're going to have to print that rule out and like put it, hang it from the rafters <laughs> up here. Makes sense. <laughs> Mike Tomlin, three-year contract extension. He, I believe, is beginning his 15th season. I love this. I absolutely – I, I, I love, love any team that keeps their coach more than about three years. Yes, 100%. And the, and the, the writing is on the wall that Pittsburgh's going to have a hard time coming up. Uh, they, they have the oldest Big Ben they've ever had who, <laughs> who played poorly last year. They have the worst offensive line they ever had uh, in, in recent history. I, I, I think they're you know third place in this division – and they go and they say, hey, we're going to extend him three years now because they know what the media is going to be like. I mean, we know every single year. It's like, oh, Mike Tomlin didn't win a Super Bowl. We should fire him. <laughs> <laughs> Mediocre signing of the week. Was that for Tomlin? No. Oh, I'm like, saying that's so no, rude. No. The 49ers have signed former Giants running back Wayne Gallman. Yeah, that's better. Wayne Gallman, now a San Francisco 49er, part of that backfield with Raheem Mostert and company. I honestly think Gallman's a fine player. He's a fine replacement running is, back. Is he better or worse than Tevin Coleman? Better. Better. Okay. Uh, one more bit of news I, we, I guess we have to bring up. Alabama wide receiver, Heisman winner, Devonta Smith, official weigh in, six foot, 166. 166. That Ooh. sounds like my junior year of high school. Yeah. And did you play? But I was probably 155. In the NFL. 155. I mean, no, that, I didn't. This but is, Deshaun Jackson did, and Marvin Harrison did, and. End of list. So um, is his official comp the, uh, those inflatables at the, the, at, at car, at yeah, car he, he, he can move so fast. He's swift like the wind, and he weighs 166. And pounds. if you're not careful, the wind might take him away. Um, yeah, I mean, this is we already knew that he was a light, skinny, framed wide receiver. That's mm -hmm. been the off season narrative of whether you believe in Devonte Smith or you don't. I mean, that's literally it. Yes, is it? You don't believe in Devonte Smith. You have one reason, and it's he's too thin to succeed in the NFL. I, I our show. Each one of us individually do not believe that. Correct. And I firmly don't believe that because I've just never seen a it's, better – He's so perfect as a wide receiver on the field. He knows how to get off of press. He finds the zone. He's His football IQ is through the roof. He's outstanding. So this is really going to be telling to me. If he fails – I just don't I, – I, it doesn't bother me one bit what he weighs in at. This is like if we all sat down and we watched Jason just destroy a triple cheeseburger and then after the fact we're like – you know what? Jason's too full to have eaten that cheeseburger. No, you just ate it. Devonta yeah. Smith just dominated yeah. his senior season with numbers nobody's put up for 20 years, 23 touchdowns, 1,800-plus yards. If you don't think that the SEC is competitive, I don't know what you're watching. Like Somebody's going to pass on him because of this. That will happen. Yep. I hope he makes them regret it.
And I hope that that triple cheeseburger goes <laughs> goes his way <laughs> because he's going to need to put some weight on. Marvin Harrison, I bring him up only because when he was leaving college and he weighed in and he was coming into the NFL, he was about six feet, 170. He His playing weight was 180, 185. Similar criticism to Hollywood Brown. Deshaun Jackson was underweight. I know you don't have a laundry list of superstars at that weight class, but I trust eyeballs and skill and ability, and so I'm not going to get with BMI Twitter on this one. I agree. Uh, unless, you know, I'm wrong, and then la uh, later on I'll... <laughs> I mean, this is this will be a lesson to be learned if we're wrong here, but I believe he is a true outlier, and I'm sticking with the talent. Yeah. Um, you know, before we move on here, this, this... What else are you sticking with, Jason? Oh, I'm sticking with the meat. Yeah. And, and, look, Devontae Smith, you probably need to listen up, too, because yeah. Omaha Steaks, <laughs> it's Omaha Steaks time, baby. I mean, look, I have been eating so much meat. These but steaks I, I wanna... are fantastic, <laughs> and I have plans, guys. I don't know if you know this, but I have plans to Please, continue well, you... eating a ton of steak this <laughs> okay. summer. Um, and that's mostly in, in you I know, did. I of, got the calendar invite for that. Right. Plans to eat steak, steak night, steak night, <laughs> steak, steak night, steak, steak night. night. Uh, look, Omaha Ribs. steaks, <laughs> steak night is Omaha steaks is the way to go, man. Uh, the, the, they have summer covered. You got backyard barbecues on your agenda. It's Omaha steaks. That's going to get you there. And right now they've got the let's go grill package that you are not going to want to pass up. You can save over 45%, plus you get a bonus 12, 12 extra Omaha Steaks burgers. That's almost four pounds of meat for free. What you do is you go to Omaha Steaks, you type footballers in the search bar. It's not a coupon code in the search bar. Find that Let's Go Grill package. You are going to be so happy. It's got four butcher cut filet mignons, four boneless pork chops, a pound of chicken breast, kielbasa sausage, so mm. much more. So here's to warmer days with fun family memories, guys, and epic backyard grill outs featuring the best steak of your life, guaranteed. Go to omahasteaks.com, use that code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar, and for a limited time, 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers, and on your first order, you get $20 off at checkout. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword FOOTBALLERS. We also want to thank Babbel for supporting today's show. Listen, for most of us, learning a second language in high school was not exactly the high point of our academic careers. Correct. In fact, I met Jason in a high school Spanish class that I want, I'm going to be honest with you, you were not paying much attention. I did not finish no, that class. No, he walked in, he said bonjour. <laughs> yeah, that's it right. was a Spanish that's class. Right. That's right. Uh, but now, thanks to Babbel. It can become uh, part of your life, the number one selling language learning app. Addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Now, if you want to learn a new language, Babbel's the way to go. They have 15-minute lessons. They make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Practical, real-world conversations, uh, things that you will use in everyday life. Teaching method, uh, the teaching method they have scientifically proven to be effective in actually learning the language. And there are 14 different languages, which is 13 more than I currently know. And uh, Babbel makes it easy. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALLERS for a, an extra three months free. Babbel, language for life. Wide receivers. All right. Early wide receiver rankings part two. Yesterday, or I'm sorry, on Tuesday, we had part one. Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, Stephon Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins, A.J. Brown, Calvin Ridley, Michael Thomas, Justin Jefferson, Julio Jones and DK Metcalf were the top 10 as of right now. Number 11, Keenan Allen of the Los Angeles Chargers. I have him at 12 on my rankings right now. Jason at 14, Mike at nine. Last year played 14 games, 147 targets, 100 receptions on the dot, 992 yards and eight touchdowns. Well, he kind of played, played 14. Well, Mike was paying close was, attention to a certain game that he... There was an incident. He warmed up. <laughs> Mike was in on him. Oh, no. He was in on him. That's right. Yeah, Keenan. Keenan uh, don't sit don't me. Don't sit me. 
Sit him. You should have sat him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been a top 14 fantasy wide receiver in each of the past four seasons. Elite route runner. We know Keenan Allen, the player, is one of the best in football. I think yes. that that's been established. It's been been proven. Uh, he had the fifth highest target share, so you know he's going to be targeted a lot. Justin Herbert, up and coming young quarterback. Uh, new head coach this year, new offensive coordinator. I honestly think the biggest question, especially with where he ranks on our consensus early rankings at 11, is would you be happy with Keenan Allen as your wide receiver one? So I I have him the lowest here. I've got him at wide receiver 14, and I would actually be okay with him as my wide receiver one. He's the archetype that I prefer, a guy that's going to get uh, for my wide receiver one, a guy that's going to get a ton of targets and receptions. Um, you know, he, he might not be the touchdown machine, have the great monstrous days that just completely win you the week, but I, I do like the hyper-targeted guys. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with their weapons yet, but obviously they have firmly lost Hunter Henry, um, and and the offensive line is is improved. I'm you know on record here of saying I think that the upgrade on defense from just being healthy is going to be significant to lowering the passing game output, and I think that's kind of what's seeping into my negative ranking on on Keenan Allen. But I this is this is nothing against the player. He's awesome. The quarterback's great, and I think I would be fine with him. Uh, you know, as as my first wide receiver if necessary. He has never been in the double-digit touchdown range. I believe he has two eight-touchdown years. He's probably around a six-touchdown guy historically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he had eight this last year. And obviously, you know, on 100 catches, 992 yards, not a lot. Uh, PPR guy, uh, go-to receiver, first-down receiver. You know, Mike, how do you feel about Keenan? You're the highest. Yeah, I because I'm the highest. We're, we we score in or or these rankings are half point PPR based. So it's I know he's going to get targets. So he averaged over ten targets a game, and that includes uh and that includes two injury games where he saw two targets in week five. He saw three targets in week fifteen because he was knocked out very early. He's going like on a per game basis. He's just he's going to see. 11, maybe even 12 targets a game. Justin Herbert uh, is uh, the real deal. He, he is a legit franchise quarterback, and he knows that Keenan Allen is his number one wide receiver. So, and he's just, it's other, it, it's supportive pieces besides Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler. Like Mike Williams is a good player, but he's a supporting wide receiver. Keenan Allen is a dominant number one who will see the target share that he deserves. So, I, yes, I'm very comfortable with him as my number one because that also means that I have a stud running back on my roster. Now, one of the things that I think we do know, because he's been in the league so long, like the names that have gone before him, a few of them, Calvin Ridley, Justin Jefferson, DK Metcalf, all of those players have potentially unreached ceilings, things we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Uh, more explosive for your fantasy team, depending on how the balance of kind of risk reward is. Allen is not going to let you down as long as he's on the field. He is going to be somebody that produces for you on your fantasy team, but he's probably not going to win you a week outright. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. that's very fair. Okay. Allen Robinson, a different Allen. Allen Robinson at 12. I got him at 11, Jason and Mike at 13, so we're very close there. 151 targets, 102 receptions, 1,250 yards, six touchdowns, finished as the wide receiver 12. Um, It feels like if you sentence Allen Robinson to this continual life of uh, pedestrian quarterback play, you're going to get the wide receiver 12, Allen Robinson. Like Mm -hmm. He is going to push his way through the muck and find his way uh, into a valuable fantasy position, but not necessarily one that, Again, is uh, much like Keenan Allen, he's not necessarily going to win you a week. Still, just twenty-seven years old. Um, he's only got three games over twenty fantasy points uh, in twenty twenty. So, doesn't win you a week with a monster performance, but rarely lets you down because he's the first read on every single play. Yeah, he, I mean, he's he's a one hundred and fifty target guy. Last year, that was what I had against him. Was it seemed like. 
the 150 targets from the year prior uh, had to deal with uh, other weapons being injured, and I didn't think he would repeat at 150. But here he is for the fourth time over 150 targets. I I think at this point you got to call that an L on my part and just say, yeah, he's a 150 target guy. Andy Dalton is not inspiring. He's no better. He's no Terrible worse. Speeches. He's exactly like I've never seen him pump. He's, up a crowd. It's like, guys, let's go be okay. And, um, you know, but it, it's more of the same, right? Uh, even though it's a different quarterback, I don't think I would have it being better or worse than Foles, Trubisky. It's it's just more of the same. So uh, I, I, I would rather have Keenan Allen. Looking at this, I've got uh, Allen Robinson one spot ahead of Keenan Allen, but I think that is a mistake. I think I need to flip those back because I would rather trust in Herbert than Dalton. Yeah, I Dalton might be the best quarterback he's played with. It's very possible, but he's still below any dreams that you would have for Allen Robinson. And in some ways, I wonder what a great quarterback in Allen Robinson would combine to do. We'll never know. No, that's been... We will never know. Fate has not allowed that. No, nor will it. No way. But he did get a lot of money on a franchise tag. So congrats, Allen. Number 13, Terry McLaurin. Yes. 134 targets last year, 87 for 11, 18, and 4. Third season for Terry McLaurin. Last year, the ninth most targets. Sixth most yards after the catch. Explosive, dynamic player. Love watching him play football. They added Curtis Samuel this offseason. And uh, you saw a, a big decline for Terry McLaurin in the second half in terms of his yards per game. Uh, no wide receiver one weeks at all over the back half. That is because Mike he, is – Yeah, I was going to say you're – He was hurt. Like, okay. You people, people don't remember that Terry McLaurin was playing by the end of the, at the, end of the year – not on one, but two high sprains for his ankles. Like he talked about it after the season. This is what came out. Might he as was, well have been his knees. That's it, how high they were. And he specifically talked about he's a captain on this team. He knows his production's going to be down, but he has to get out on that field. And, and like, if you've ever watched any of like the, the locker room stuff with Terry McLaurin, this dude is awesome. He is truly a leader in that locker room, and. He knew he was. He knew he couldn't perform, but he had to be out there. So, and I am, I am all about the Terry McLaurin life this year with the upgrade to Ryan Fitzpatrick, who yeah, you are the highest. You're at eleven. Who, I'm, at, I'm at thirteen. Ryan Fitzpatrick will force feed his number one wide receiver. That is locked. That is a proven fact of Ryan Fitzpatrick's career. So I am extremely excited for what Terry is going to do this year. Uh, Jason, you're the lowest at fifteen. I am. I'm really in the middle. Like you can like a player a ton, but still see where he's not going to get you. And I'm afraid that that's what happens with me with Terry McLaurin in terms of putting him up into a top 12 contention. Ron Rivera, the Washington defense, a dynamic Antonio Gibson, the addition of Curtis Samuel. This team, you're right. Ryan Fitzpatrick heavily targets his one. We don't know if Fitzpatrick will be there for the entire year. And I think that Ron Rivera will rein in some of those tendencies because of the, the makeup of this team and the built, uh, how he builds this team. I still think McLaurin will be great, but I, I put him just outside, obviously, these, those previous two guys. Yeah, I mean, you, you illustrated kind of my tempered expectations. I, I would love for Terry McLaurin to get 160 Fitz magic targets and then he he could be a top five wide receiver he's got blazing speed and you know he's just awesome to watch on the field I would love that to happen but I do think because of the running game and the defense they're not going they're going to try to win games versus try to just go out there and uh, you know Tampa Bay Buccaneers chuck the ball um over and over because you've got a bad defense so I'm 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 uh I'm tempered uh, with my Terry McLaurin expectations, but my hope is certainly very high. And Devontae Parker had the very flamboyant into two seasons ago, but didn't really start last year on fire despite Fitzpatrick winning those games. Mike, the highest Terry McLaurin can finish in fantasy football is a wider is the wide receiver three. Jason, the highest Terry McLaurin can finish in fantasy is the wide receiver three. 
That's what I said. Well, then you are smart. <laughs> you're smart. Oh, you're handsome. So you you're both, handsome. even though you, you both have a differing opinion here, you both think that he would be able to have a ceiling. Yeah, we and even if the the targets are down, he just he has home run ability to to have two receptions in a game, and he took one fifty yards to the house. And so I think that's. We both agree on the ceiling. I'm just a bit more bullish that Terry McLaurin is going to hit it. How many 75-yard touchdowns over the course of the season can Keenan Allen score? Because the answer is zero. Uh, what, one, zero. One-ish? He could do uh, it. I, I, would say, I would say if the line was 0. 0.5, I would take the under. I would, I would yeah, I would bet the under. <laughs> so, you just ask, can but, he? Yeah. But, when it's, but that's the thing with Terry McLaurin is he, he could have four or five of them. Yeah, but I, I, I want to – highlight the fact that this is a huge upgrade where he's positioned here at 13. That's a huge upgrade on where he finished last year. Even last season injuries for part of it, whatever he had four out of 15 weeks where he was wide receiver one four. Finished, finished as the wide receiver 21. Yeah, so yes, so, this is an upgrade. Yeah. So I think if you finish at 13, that means that he's doing all those things and getting all that benefit from Ryan Fitzpatrick that you want. Amari Cooper at 14. <laughs> Uh, 14's where Mike and myself both have him in our early wide receiver rankings. Jason at 11. Last year, 92 for 1114 yards and five touchdowns. Dak is back. In 29 career full games with Dak, he's averaged eight targets, eight and a half targets, 80 yards receiving. That's absurd. Somehow still 26.9 years old. <laughs> Almost there. Very young. Uh, what did I, I? I saw an incredible tweet, Brooks. Maybe you can find this. I believe he is the same exact age as Calvin Ridley. They both went to Alabama and they never played together at Alabama. What? Yeah. That there's a tweet. What? It, you could probably find it, Brooks. With I think that's it, though. I mean, that's the gist. Is they both went to Alabama, both the same age, never played together. Because of just well, – Amari came in yeah. so young. And um, Calvin was old when he got into the league. Yeah, Amari Cooper's entering his 22nd year <laughs> yes. in the NFL, <laughs> which is really, really impressive. Look, I, I think you guys are too low on Amari Cooper. I think I am too. Um, Amari Cooper, we've had so many discussions over the years of well, he somehow, some way, he'll find a way to be good half the year, bad half the year, whether it's a mixture of games or the first half, second half. Once again, this last year, he found a way by getting rid of his quarterback to uh, be disappointing after the hot start. But the reality is Dak is there and he is still going to be the number one. Like I, I, I flipped because going into the offseason, I was convinced that it was going to be CeeDee Lamb as the one who was going to take over that role this year. And the more that I've thought about it, looked at it, I, I don't think that's true. I think we're still another year away from it. Um, and Amari Cooper, if he retains that number one role with, CD on the outside or or in the slot, um, you know, to draw some defenders away. He's just on a great offense with a bad defense as the number one target, who's always been great with them. And and I think Amari Cooper's going to have a fantastic year, assuming that he and Dak are both healthy. I'm fine with my ranking <laughs> at 14. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Yeah, I mean, I I you know, CD Lamb is a very very talented player. Zeke in this offense. Dak thrown to Gallup. Um, I don't know if Cooper demands uh, much of a different stat line than he put up last year. Like, that's an impressive stat line. He should be proud of himself. It was a tough year. He put up 92 and 1,100. Um, yeah, with Dalton and Ben DiNucci. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, he was but, on a 1,600-yard pace with Dak. Granted, that was short sample. Yeah, he was the wide receiver seven through the first six weeks of the year. That's a compelling argument. Wide receiver 30 the rest of the way. Um, I don't think any of us believe he he was necessarily going to stay at that wide receiver seven level. Maybe Jason does, but oh uh, yeah, I, I I mean I I do the the funny thing about wide receiver seven through the uh, first six weeks is you know Dak went down what we it, he only had the first four weeks with Dak where he mm -hmm. was significantly better. I mean, well, week, CD Lamb was a, a a brand new baby. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, week five that's in that top six uh, weeks, he was the wide receiver 79. So, I mean, those first four weeks with Dak were fantastic. I think that's what people want to see from Amari Cooper over a full season, to believe in him and to, to raise his ADP is to see kind of a complete year, not just the end of the Dallas season, not just the beginning of this one. Give me a full year and we'll be on board. And it comes down to the 
defense to me because through those first four weeks, if you remember what happened with Dallas, where <laughs> it, was wild. it was absolute insanity each and every single week, and and Dak, I've, I mean, I don't have the 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 yardage in front of me, but it was absolutely absurd. The you know, the numbers that Dak had to put up just so that the team could compete. Wasn't he on pace for like six thousand yards? <laughs> Probably. Or All right, Mike Evans at fifteen. Mike Evans was the previous record holder for being the same age every single year, no matter how many years went by. Amari Cooper is working uh, on it. On pace for uh, over 6,700 yards, Jason. <laughs> 6,700 <laughs> yards. Perfect. I mean, that would have happened. We all know that. Three straight games of over 450 passing yards. <laughs> wow. More of that, please. Yeah. Uh, Mike Evans at 15. Seven years. Thousand yards, always got the chance of double digit touchdowns. Chris Godwin's back. Mm -hmm. uh, but this has been, uh, you know, Mike Evans' wide receiver room for a while now. Are you guys, what are you expecting? He finished as wide receiver 10. We're all lower than that right now. He is extremely difficult uh, because you have these games where it was just he would catch one. One pass. I mean, and, and it's not like something for one was, yard for one yard and one touchdown. Yes, uh, but just I mean, very very low targets, multiple games, four targets, four two two. Uh, but where you have to do a bit of projecting with Mike Evans is, even though it's Tom Brady, the Bruce Arian system is is different. I mean, especially for Tom Brady, who has played in the same system for a very very long time. Quarterbacks tend to struggle the first year in the Bruce Arians system, and then there's really an explosion, and Mike Evans could be the beneficiary of it. I have him at 15, and that's more of a... Liking other guys more. I, yeah, I like other guys, but Mike Evans... Let me, Mike Evans could be just absolutely amazing this year. Let me highlight some differences between last season and the previous two years with Jameis Winston. He had averaged eight targets, 8.8 .8 targets per game and went down to 6.8 last year, so two fewer mm -hmm. targets per game. His yards per reception went from 17.5 down to 14.4. Mm -hmm. His yards per game, tremendous drop, 92.4 down to 62.9. Well, what made the difference? Touchdown rate. He went from 10.5% touchdown rate to 18.6%. It was essentially, I mean, when you look at those numbers, you're basically saying you're playing with a better quarterback. You need right. fewer passes. Y your team has a better defense. Like when we make these cases for defenses improving, this is the counterpoint for a good receiver to still do work in an offense because um, you bring up, you know, whatever, Keenan Allen and the, the Los Angeles defense getting better and Herbert can't throw it all the time. Well, if Herbert is a better quarterback and the efficiency goes up, you can have the same type of fantasy finish. Evans was wide receiver 10, did it on touchdowns more than he did previous years with yardage. Um, you know that what do you have 13 touchdowns yeah yeah 13 uh but i mean i think you can lock in 13's a lot you know that's that's the most touchdowns he's he's had he did open his career with 12 but i think you can lock in eight yeah, yeah career, now, career average by the way that 10.4 percent he had done with Jameis. that's his career average 10.4 percent touchdown rate yeah, I mean, he, he's obviously a, a great weapon with his size at the goal line, and I, I think they'll continue to use it. But I, I am concerned about Mike Evans um, from the target standpoint. I mean, he had six games with five or fewer targets um, this past year. Uh, he, he didn't have that many games in this previous, like, five seasons. Uh, so it's, it's really something that you're not used to seeing with Mike Evans is is the how that he got his fantasy points here and and it scares me because I think what you're going to end up with let's say he has 11 touchdowns next year finishes as the wide receiver 12 or even better I, I don't think you're going to have anywhere near the consistency he had this year because like you said Mike some of those touchdowns came in those games where it was like it just bailed him out of having a terrible awful One no catch. good very bad game Two yards, one touchdown. Chris Godwin missed four games, injured last year too. Sure, and wasn't quite right for other games. So Godwin, you know, he fits the mold of the more heavily targeted receiver in the offense. We'll talk about him momentarily. Thielen at sixteen, 
Godwin is 17 on our rankings. Thielen, Jason is by far the highest. He has him at 12. Oh, uh, Godwin, whoa. Godwin, I'm the highest at 15. So, what? you know, Jason, Adam Thielen hanging on top 10 wide receiver, three of the past four years. Last year, it was one thing and one thing only it was touchdowns. It is really I've ironic. never pronounced it that way before. Touchdowns. Touchdowns. It is really ironic because uh, what Two happened? Words. What happened last year with Mike That's Evans? Like when a plane lands. Touch. That, down. That's a touchdown. Yeah, right. Instead yeah, of, that's instead true. of a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. So he, but Emphasis he landed the, the wrong syllable. He landed the plane in the fourteen end zone times. Very often, <laughs> fourteen so, times. Um, it, it, it's it's spooky how similar um his season is with with Mike Evans in the sense that uh you know had just over a hundred targets similar to Evans was really bailed out by the touchdowns you could say and and both of these guys I think you can argue deserve to be wide receiver ones and deserve to bring about concern but we don't I, live in a world of people deserving anything Jason and so <laughs> okay um he doesn't deserve it he must earn it well he's earned it with like Andy just said being a Wide receiver won three of the last four years, and the one time he wasn't, he missed half the season. So um, it's one of those deals where I believe in the Vikings offense. I I love when you really have two targets and that's it. Tom Brady loves to spread the ball around, and I, I'm much more confident that Kirk Cousins is going to go, okay, Jefferson, Thielen, Thielen, Jefferson, Jefferson, and Thielen. Like, that's his one – that's what he's done. It was it was Thielen and Diggs. Now it's Jefferson and Thielen, and I, I guess I'm just more confident that he is necessary, whereas Tampa Bay, I mean, they have way more weapons to, to throw the ball to. Uh, I agree with Jason. Even though I have Thielen here at, at 18, I can see a world where he's back inside the top 12 again. Interesting. He is – you know, he's Kirk Cousins, Devontae Adams around the goal line. They design plays for him down there. It's who he's most comfortable throwing the ball to. So 14 touchdowns, I don't think it happens again. I agree. But 10 touchdowns, the reception total is going up a little bit. I could they see would it. have to. I could see it happen. Because Thielen isn't without precedent on the reception totals. It's not like this is a historical career 60-70 reception guy. So I do see an out, like a range of outcomes is well within where Jason has it. Thoughts? I, I find myself being a little bit more on the outside. Well, it makes sense. I mean, a, I, I, could make, I could nope. make the argument. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to make the argument against Thielen, it's pretty easy, right? He's going to be 31 years old. By the time the season starts, his targets came down. He was reliant on touchdowns. There's there's plenty of ways, but I, I when I when I take a step back and just look, I think well, he still was great last year. Like on the field, he didn't look bad. He looked very good. He's guaranteed a, a good target market share in the offense, and I and I believe in the offense. But plenty of ways to doubt him, and and I think that that doubt is actually going to cause his ADP to be nobody wants to draft Thielen. Like. That, for, yeah, that for, sounds right. There's all the new hotness, right? There's there's Terry McLaurin has a ceiling that is, well, you and I both agreed, like the wide receiver three. I think people are going to be taking guys like that over Adam Thielen uh, all I the will. time. Yes, exactly. And I would rather have the known asset here. I think Godwin at 17 might actually be one of the bigger steals in this draft because uh, much like Thielen, I don't know if people want to draft Chris Godwin. I don't think they're going into this year looking at him like this wide receiver two in the 14 games he played with Jameis Winston, which was an insane, prolific stat line that he put up that season. Last year, injury plagued in, out of your lineup, especially at the beginning of the year after heavy investment went into him. We had said at the beginning of the year, Godwin and, and, and Evans are going in a place in the drafts where they have to be uh, incredible. He wasn't. Some of it was his fault. Some of it wasn't. But, uh, you know, right now, this is the offense. It's Mike Evans and it's Chris Godwin. It's year two, like Mike just illustrated with Tom Brady. Godwin is sure-handed. Godwin is somebody that I think Brady wants to lean on in this offense. Uh, his 16-game pace last year was 87 for 11, 20, and 9, which would have put him at okay. wide receiver 12. And so if he's sitting there at 15, 16, 17 in your draft, he represents a bargain to me. And, and he also did that where – 
you know, he missed a lot of the games in the first half of the season where he was very banged up, injured. And then once he came back, he had Antonio Brown on the field who had, you know, Antonio Brown didn't get there till week nine and he had over 60 targets from then to the end of the season. And that's when Godwin was good. So now you take Antonio Brown potentially. I think they might resign. just put him right back on the they, team. I, I agree. They they might. And and then this says that, you know, those those 16 game pace numbers you just said, he, he should be fine. But I think the upside for Godwin is that if Antonio Brown isn't there, all the more targets his way. All right, 18 is Kenny Galladay. Mm. Bringing the smooth routes to the Big Apple. To the Big Apple. Mm. So smooth. <laughs> What's going to happen to Kenny Galladay if the Giants draft another wide receiver? Because they're one of the most frequently mocked teams for picking up a Devonta Smith, uh, for a Jamar Trace, Chase drop. Um, that That's one of my questions around Kenny Galladay. I don't know what everything's going to look like. They obviously paid him big money. He was one of the very few people that got big money in the offseason, four-year, $72 million deal. Oh, man. But getting paid a ton of money in free agency at the wide receiver position does not always translate to fantasy success. Right. Uh, especially when Daniel Jones is your quarterback. There's no guarantees there. So, Mike, you're the most bullish, uh, the most optimistic uh, fella when it comes to Kenny G. So how do you see this playing out? Uh, see Allen Robinson's last two years. That, that That's how I see it working out for Kenny Galladay. Subpar quarterback play, but should see over 150 targets just – by sheer force of volume and him being a an excellent wide receiver, he's going to be fine for fantasy. But the, that it, see him in, in the top ten, it can happen. I'm not going to put my my wager on him making it up there, but he's still going to be a perfectly fine and safe week to week wide receiver too. If Kenny Galladay has 150 targets, he'll be the steal of the draft. I, I can't get him there. And and we haven't statted these teams out. We're going to be doing that here in just over a week. Uh, once the draft is over, we mm -hmm. stat every single player out for every single team. That's that's the basis of the, the ultimate draft kit we put together. Um, but I can't envision right now him getting there. With Sterling Shepard and Evan Ingram and Saquon back and Darius Slayton, like I think he's going to be more around 120, 130 targets is probably the most I can get him, let alone if they were to draft another guy. And and that's you know, that's been what Kenny G's been. He's been a 120 target player where he was the wide receiver six, but he had Matthew Stafford throwing him the ball. So yeah. Uh, I, the efficiency. I, yeah, the efficiency, the touchdowns, the deep ball. And that could happen. I, I think, uh, you know, I think he could have a good season. But because the my outlook on him is that he's not going to be a complete and utter target hog, I'm worried about the consistency based on quarterback play. Last year, the, the Giants were the single least efficient passing team in the league. So if he's got to make a lot of hay on a limited amount of targets compared to comparables in his draft range he's going to have to see daniel jones improve Oof, that sounds a lot like what people were saying about the buffalo bills mm -hmm. going into last year he is the worst completion percentage josh allen and then they got a stefan diggs and all of a sudden i, I the, the there is a possibility here that that the giants ball out i still see that I, I don't project it but i see that as within the range of realistic outcomes dj Moore at 19, Robert Woods at 20. Both of these players, I mean, DJ Moore is, there's no question that he's a very talented player. He's so good. He does disappear. <laughs> uh, last year, only 118 targets in 15 games, 66 receptions. That's a problem. Four touchdowns. That's a problem. New quarterback. That's a problem. Um, but, but Andy. Oh. Yes. Isn't that the solution <laughs> Sam Darnold for the win wait the vo hold on the I voice I think of, that's the voice the of voice public, of public opinion. opinion is backing Sam Darnold but they traded <laughs> for him they yeah is accurate. that Matt rules voice because that's not the voice of public <laughs> opinion <laughs> I'm out of here DJ Moore's a great player I don't know what the you know they're going he, he's going to be integral to their offense how much volume the offense can produce, 
the the return of Christian McCaffrey, who missed so much of last year, those are some big. Uh, you know, Christian McCaffrey is not a thirty catch running back. He is a wide receiver. Yeah. He, you know, you want to bring up Curtis Samuel's ninety seven targets being gone. Uh, hand him over. He'll take more than that. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is uh, Sam Darnold's best friend. I get so excited when you say that because in our main league, I've got Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> yes, yes. Dude, Jason, please continue we, we talking about him. Uh, so if Sam Darnold's an upgrade. About Christian McCaffrey, please. <laughs> well, I could do that too because obviously uh, – I get to enjoy oh. Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey That's in our right, dynasty, dynasty league. Oh, my goodness. I'd prefer to talk about DJ Moore, who was on our championship roster. Oh, ours? Deniston yes. Moore Jr.? Is that who you're talking about? <laughs> Wait, Deniston. is that his name? Yes, Deniston. Deniston? Oh, that's hot. Deniston? Deniston? Yes. Sheriff of one of those uh, Wild West towns. Deniston. Sheriff Deniston <laughs> Moore. That's, a, that's balling. I've never heard that name before. I have not either. It's, it reminds me of uh, Denisovich from uh, Hotel Transylvania. That would be you. Yeah. No, Jason's on me with oh, yeah. Hotel Transylvania. Dennis Moore Jr., what's his real ceiling in this offense? The ceiling to me is wide receiver 15. Yeah, probably. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I could see him sneaking in the top 12. He, he's actually a very um, – the, the way that I look at him and Terry McLaurin is somewhat similar in the sense that I think they, sure. they both have – the skill set and the physical tools and ability to just dominate on the NFL field. Um, big play guys. Yeah, yeah, big play guys can absolutely take the, the screen or the bomb to the house, and that's going to provide a lot of fantasy value. But the, you know, the issue here is there are more targets. I, you know, Robbie Anderson is going to soak in a ton of targets and, and Christian McCaffrey as well. So, uh, the upside certainly seems capped from a target standpoint for DJ for Deniston. Is Robert Woods reaching a level of fantasy football fatigue where he'll become yes. a value this year? Yeah, when you were it's saying, like I just don't want to draft Robert Woods because like he's been drafted for a number of years and there's somebody else I could draft. When you were saying Robert Woods at twenty, I was shaking my head because we had a conversation, uh, Jason and I, when we were doing the rankings. I'm like, do you have Robert Woods in your top twenty? He said. No, I have him at 21. I said, I have him right around there, too. And that feels... And then you went and looked at mine and saw him at 21 it, as well? It feels so wrong. Oh, there's no way he finishes that low. Because he's not going to finish that low. No, and that's great, because I'm going to draft him everywhere. <laughs> I mean, Robert this Woods... Is this a setup? No, this is not a setup. It's just like, when you're when you're ranking these players, especially right now when we're not doing a stat base, but we're doing like, who do I want to draft? Who do I want to take the shot on? All these great names of big play guys who have way more talent than Robert Woods has uh, from a physical standpoint. Like, Robert Woods is a great athlete. He's in the NFL, but he's not some supreme outlier athlete like a lot of these other wide receivers we're talking about. He's just ho-hum, I'm going to run solid routes, be at the right spot, catch the ball, move the sticks. And at the end of the day, that's going to add up to a lot of fantasy points. Always does with Robert Woods. He gets a quarterback upgrade, although yeah. that, that is a variable. You don't know necessarily. Yeah, but it was a good thing for Terry McLaurin earlier in the discussion. And it maybe was a good yeah. thing for DJ Moore one player ago. Oh, right. it was, yeah, but that was not an upgrade. <laughs> okay, <laughs> on, maybe not. Donald, but, but, but you're right. Like Robert Woods, let me, let me read mind-blowing stats to you here. From 2018 to 2020, Robert Woods v. Amari Cooper v. Allen Robinson. More receptions per game, Robert Woods. Top 12 weeks, Robert Woods. Top 24 weeks, Robert Woods. Fantasy points per game, Robert Woods. Oh, Bobby Woods, I love you. Oh, we, are, we are disrespecting this man. Oh, but I think but he's it, going to move when I get into the numbers. Yeah. When we start looking at what Matthew Stafford's going to do in this offense, I mean, you can't. You can't make an argument that Jared Goff is a better situation for Robert Woods than Matthew Stafford is going to be. Yep. A lot of times when we go from our eyeball uh, sort a list rankings of the basically the opinion rankings, and then we change to the statted out really detailed rankings, when those changes happen, those players that take a big step forward, those are the ADP values. Those are the guys – that look average draft position is based on people's opinions of players mm -hmm. when they're just selecting the guy they want on a list and i i think robert woods will be a huge value bobby big time oh bobby big time <laughs> bobby big time <laughs> he's trying it on for size mike it's april here comes big time 
Bob, it's Bobby. You got to keep the alliteration. Oh, you got to give the Bobby. Yeah. You have to have both. Bo- Bobby is pretty much the only part of it I like, but I do. I mean, <laughs> clear the path. Here comes Bobby, Bobby big, big time. time. It, it's tough though because he's not really a touchdown guy. I feel like Bobby Big Time would be like. Well, you didn't have Matthew Stafford. Oh, Stafford's Stafford turn makes him, into big him time? Bobby Big Time. Bobby Medium Time. Uh, that's, is that nah. the Jared Goff version? <laughs> no, he's he's just he's not sexy. That's the be- That's the actual way to put it. He's never been a sexy wide receiver to roster. He doesn't score a lot of touchdowns. Uh, you know, he didn't. Amari Cooper, Allen Robinson, they had more touchdowns than Robert Wood had, Woods had in that stretch. So he doesn't score a lot. They all do the same amount of yardage, but you're kind of counting on him to be a PPR type of player. Yep. So, uh, but him and Cooper Cup, who was not in the top 20 this year in our consensus rankings, are both very, very interesting in terms of draft day value because if one of those guys becomes the go-to for Matthew Stafford or this offense takes another uh, step forward, you could see s- huge uh, you know, points for your team at a yeah, ADP that you're not expecting. Lock at 24, Sutton, Beckham, Ayuk, Fuller, Smith, Schuster, Higgins. We, I'll be honest with you. Beyond the top 20 or so, uh, I didn't, you know, go nitty gritty on these. You didn't yet, put your so. heart in it. No, my, I mean, this is this is early. We'll have them all statted out in two weeks. So, you know, I see Brandon Ayuk's name, and I want to start talking about Debo. I see, you know, Will Fuller, and I want to talk about the offense in in Miami. But Deontay Johnson, C.D. Lamb, there's yeah, going to be a lot yeah. of a lot of guys out yeah, there. Deontay that- might belong. In, up here yes i agree so uh lots more to come we'll be talking quarterbacks tight ends uh we've got the draft next week we're going to have a lot of very exciting news to share with you on tuesday i think that's going to do it i think so for mike Wright, jason moore bobby big time and andy holloway we'll bobby. uh bobby, big time. catch you up on the next episode goodbye of the podcast Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Foot Clan, this episode was brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Speaking of big time. Big time. Go to omahasteaks.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar for a limited time. You'll get 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers. And on your first order, you get $20 off at checkout.